Okay, hello. Uh, this is to help you be able to load the Pixie Dust and be able to use it relatively easily. So if you uh, create a reference and bring in the Pixie Dust, and it should load the dust. You be able to press play, and you'll see that the particles are there. Um, and if you want, if you use this controller, you can actually move the particles about. So you've got those functions, um, and then what you do is, if you go to the menu, that will either be called uh, Devil's Menu or Scripts Menu, um, and then you bring in the Pixie Dust controller. And you should get this controller here up, and what that does is it will just give you more functions for the actual Pixie Dust. So emitted particles is how many particles are emitted throughout the whole volume. Size is the size of the uh, transparency map, so if I make that smaller it'll actually make the whole the whole uh, area of particles that are visible smaller. And you've got, these are multiplier changing the colour, so RGB, quite straightforward. Lifespan, minimum and maximum are basically, um, they're the, there's an expression that creates these th so they're randomly in between the two points so if you have this low and this high then you'll just get a wider range or if you just want them all to be the same then you just do them at 25 for each so that means they'll stay on for longer and they won't blink whereas if I put that to one you should get some ones that if I increase this you should get some that blink See they'll go on and off like that. Quite straightforward as well. Uh, obviously size of the actual pixie dust, so you have to rewind it so you won't it won't you won't see it happening straight away. You have to refresh and then you'll see that they get bigger. Um, and then image sequence is the same, you'll have to refresh it as well, but it just means because the way this is done is it's made off, made up of image sequences, so you'll need to uh, basically refresh it. So now, if I put this up to eleven, it will only show image eleven in the sequence. If I put it back down to one, you'll get lots of different ones, and just the same again. So twist is the twist of the actual particle itself. And then the volume scale is the actual scale of the whole volume, so if you want to scale it up and down. Uh, you've also got visibility, so it hides. Then you've got override display, which is similar to the normal Maya controls, which means that if you put it on bounding box and you're animating, it's in the scene, but you don't want it to be in your way, basically. So, um, And then you've got the color settings and it's based on a ramp so you can move and change these and change the color to blue and you can see that it just gives you a bit more control over the actual the way that the uh, pixie dust looks and then the same with the transparency um, if you look from above you can see this a bit better You can see that uh, if I make another one of these, you can see that the transparency is actually. So if I delete this altogether, you can see that there's now it's all transparent in the middle because of the way that I set up the uh, the transparency map. So you can keep on adding to that or changing it how you want. Um, and then you've got dynamic settings, which if you tick on, they'll start to move. I'll turn this twist off for now so you can see. So if we put this down to so 
so you can see they're moving now and then you've got the frequency and then uh, this is a direction that you want them to move more in so they're more moving up quite simple particle disk cache you just really if you set the times that you want I believe that's supposed to say end time um, and basically uh, if you hit if you click on the tech, uh, tick box here it will create a disk cache and you'll be able to scrub through so it's just a bit quicker and it means that it will be the same every time so if you were trying to animate around the particles it makes it easier for you um, but bear in mind that you need to if you want to edit if you do a particle disk cache as soon as you want to edit it you'll have to untick it set the time and then tick it again and it'll create a new one for you otherwise you won't be able to edit it so you'll start messing around and you'll notice things won't change but it's something to bear in mind and then this is just so that you can render the actual film so render this, uh, the particle so if you bring this up so you can use it and do a few tests before you decide to render it and you can choose the resolutions by select resolution so we're most probably using that or HD 1020 and you'd need to use you'd need to tick on full image resolution and then you set your start frame your end frame and then obviously the the way that you have it the extent uh, the extension of it and then also you choose your uh, image format and then you hit the render sequence button and it will create a render for you um, and then you've got the multi-pass options which is basically just to give you a bit of blur but I don't know how often we'll use that but that's basically all of it really. Uh, there are some older versions of this which might contain some uh, some other things that I've missed out hopefully this would have covered most of the areas but basically um, I'll put them, I'll post them on the on the same page, on the same thread as this so that if you need be you can look at them as well so okay that's it, thank you very much